Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about repair equipment that I don't take with me into the field. Hello there, everyone. Today, I wanted to give you all an opportunity to learn from some of my mistakes. We're going to be talking about four pieces of repair equipment that when I first started taking multi-day trips, I used to take out in the field with me, but which I don't take out with me any longer. But let's get started by talking a little bit about my philosophy when it comes to repair kit items. Have you ever heard the expression, don't pack your fears? Well, if there's ever one category of gear that makes it easy to run afoul of that piece of advice, it's your repair kit. After all, the whole point of your repair kit is to help out when something else breaks. So if you're worried about everything breaking, it gets really easy to throw the kitchen sink into your repair kit. And that's going to be a lot of items that you no longer need. So approaching it a little bit more rationally, let's talk a bit about risk. Risk equals probability times consequence. So the first question you want to ask yourself is, what's the probability of this equipment breaking? Is it low probability, like a crampon point breaking off? Or is it a high probability, like some torn fabric? Then you want to move on to what's the consequence of this item breaking and not being repaired? Is it just inconvenient, like some leaking down? Or is it going to be a health and safety issue, like a broken tent pole that leaves you without shelter? So your repair kit should reflect your need to deal with the many low consequence but high probability issues, as well as a few of the high consequence, low probability issues. So with that being said, here are four pieces of repair equipment that I used to take out in the field with me, but I don't take any longer. And here's what I've replaced them with. Item number one is wet adhesive patch kits. Originally, I brought these because they're what came with my tent or my inflatable sleeping pad or whatever it was that I was buying. Further, I was kind of used to the concept because of the many tube style wet epoxies and seam sealers that are out there. Then I discovered tear -aid. I bring about a three inch by six inch strip of tear with me all the time. For those of you unfamiliar with tear -Aid, it's a waterproof, airproof, instantly adhering, flexible elastomer. To apply it, you simply cut the size that you need out of the strip, you round the corners of the new patch because squared corners can more easily peel up and catch debris under them, and you apply to a clean surface. I've used it on tents, I've used it on backpacks, I've used it on clothes, on all sorts of materials. If rips and tears of any kind are the most likely type of equipment break to have happen, then certainly applying tear aid has been the most frequent fix that I've applied. So obviously tear aid is far easier to use than any wet adhesive. It's less messy. It requires no cure time. And it also requires no equipment other than the patch material and something to cut it with. My six inch by three inch strip, by the way, weighs four grams. Item number two is a sewing kit. You know, threads, needles, scissors, buttons. You can think of this as an additional element that I no longer need in part thanks to the tear aid we just discussed previously. Again, it is way easier to apply tear aid than to sew up some kind of material, particularly when you start adding in cold weather and try and do thread needles and do micro accurate work with thread. But one thing that tear aid cannot replace is a button. So besides the tear aid, I replaced my sewing kit with also a safety pin or two. Item number three, if you don't bring a sewing kit, do I bring an extra pair of scissors to cut my tear aid or maybe a multi-tool? Well, again, I used to pack a multi-tool, but to be honest, I just never used it. It seems like it would come in handy on multi-day trips, but it really never has. I've even taken it on big expeditions to the Andes, to Alaska, to the Himalaya. It's just never been needed. Now, I probably will still continue to take it on big expeditions where having a more robust repair kit and a more robust first aid kit makes a lot of sense, but I've long since taken it out of my pack for simple multi-day adventures. Nope, no multi-tool. I just bring with me a very small, but very sharp belay knife. This is the Trango Piranha. It weighs 20 grams. It has a safety latch to keep it from unlocking when it's being carried. It has a serrated edge for cutting through cord, fabric, and any other textured materials, and it tapers to a very fine point. You couple that point with the best-in-class 440 steel, that's 440C 
surgical cutting class steel, and you get a very sharp knife that I can use the point of to cut my terry like I would with an X-Acto knife, but it's hardened and solid enough in the blade to saw through materials. As far as the other miscellaneous screwdrivers and different types of blades, all of the other various arms of the multi-tool, there just aren't very many screws on equipment anymore. It's too heavy. I've never needed the pliers in the field either. I use them at home, but never needed them out in the field. And there's only so many ways that I need to cut something, so how many different blades do I really need? So at 188 grams, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to carry my multi-tool. Item number four is really a set of items that are all kind of of the same type. So think of things like elastic shock cord, cord locks, buckles, things that are designed to connect things together. Cutting things is great, and sure, tear aid can fuse things back together, and so can zip ties for that matter, another piece of equipment that I always take with me, but you can't undo and redo those connections with tear aid or zip ties. And that's what these materials are typically for, being able to join, unjoin, and rejoin things like straps or for carrying gear on the outside of your pack, those kinds of things. But I now carry something that is simpler, lighter, and more versatile. Just simple three millimeter utility cord. I carry about 20 feet of it. Sure, it's not elastic and it doesn't have convenient clips, but there are many more use cases for a cord than these other pieces of specialized equipment. So if you know some basic knots like a square knot, a directional figure eight, a taut line hitch, you'll find that there's a lot you can do with a simple piece of cord. In fact, I typically replace the pre-placed elastic cords or crampon sleeves or other specialty items that come on my backpacks and I replace them with this same utility cord. Again, it's lighter and it can be used in a lot more ways. So there you go. There are four pieces of repair kit that I used to take with me on multi-day trips, but which I don't carry anymore and which I've now replaced with some other piece of gear. Now keep in mind that this doesn't make a full repair kit. I'm simply talking about some gear that I've learned isn't as useful as I thought it would be or as efficient to carry and use. So are there any pieces of gear that you've banished from your pack? Let us know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, you can do us a favor by hitting that like button. You can also find additional information related to this and all of our videos by visiting our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. The link is in the description. If you want to be alerted when we release our weekly video, you can subscribe and ring that bell. And if you'd like to see us cover any specific subjects that would be helpful to you and your family, maybe you'd like a full review of what's in our repair kit or maybe some other topic, you can drop those suggestions in the comment section below too. In the meantime, keep on getting out and getting more out of that big outside.